I was about eight or nine years old, and this was a, a communal wrestling event where like grown men were wrestling, but intermittently they would have young kids come in and wrestle, and they picked me to go out into a crowd where the whole village was watching to wrestle, and it was like um, one of the coolest things, but the most frightening thing too, because I used to just wrestle on the grass with friends, but never in the public um, glare of the whole village. Uh, we're talking a couple of thousand people watching. Um, and I, they picked me out and then picked another kid that was my age. Uh, we went out and, and wrestled in front of everybody, and I was successful that day. And that was when I was like, wow, this is so cool, I want to do it. I was nine years old, and I thought, you know what, this is so cool. I didn't know that I, in, in fact, at first I, I thought I would freeze in front of everybody. I wouldn't be able to perform. But when I got into it and I was actually able to win at the end of it, I was like, wow, this is so cool. I, I can finally actually do this and I think I can do this better when I get more confidence. If I do it many more times, I'll have confidence and I'll be good at it. And I just thought this is what I'm gonna do. In 1994, when I came to Canada, to Victoria, for the Commonwealth Games, and decided that I wanted to stay back in Canada, uh, was probably the toughest decision I ever made and the toughest one I, I, would, I would ever make in my life. And the most important too, and if I were to make it over and over again, I would still make the same decision I did, and that was to stay back in Canada. Uh, it was tough because I was living behind a big family, a family of about 20 brothers and sisters. I was living behind my mom, whom I love very much, and my friends. I'm in Nigeria, where I'd grown up all my life. And at the age of 20, to be leaving everything behind and be starting a new life, uh, a life of complete uncertainty, was, was something that bothered me uh, a great deal. But I knew that as a human being, as someone who wanted to move forward in life, I had to do it and face the consequences later. I didn't want to look back and think, uh, what would I have been 20 years or 10 years from now if I had not stayed back in Canada? So I wanted to make that decision and I'm glad I did. In 2000, uh, when I went to the Olympics, uh, went through a lot of the qualifying matches and got all, all the way up to the final match. Uh, won in the final match against Russia. And we're on the podium and they're giving, giving the medals away first to the bronze medalist, to the silver medalist, and then uh, to me from Canada and they, hang, they, they put the medal around your neck. And to be honest, you, don't, you, you are almost in a trance. You don't even know what is going on. You think you are dreaming, you are in a dream world because it is not real. It's almost like you're standing in one place and the whole world is kind of rotating around you. And then when you see the flag going above every other flag and all Canada sing, you just lost. You, you're so excited that, to the point that you, you're almost lost in this big crowd, you know? And it was the most amazing thing that has ever happened to me. Being involved in athletics um, in and of itself, it's important. But I think what is more important is that feeling you get of being in the team. I mean, I'm a wrestler and you go out and just wrestle you and another opponent. But the, the more important thing is that you have training partners that have to get you ready to be able to go compete. You have coaches, you have uh, massage therapists, you have basically have a team. And in most other sports, like team sports, you, you have to have a team to be able to excel. And it's that ability that sports and being involved in athletics gives you that ability to be able to work in a group environment. Because eventually when you get older, and you have a job, you're going to work in a team with other people. And it teaches you at a young age how to be able to do, deal with that. My philosophy of life is, um, is that, you know, the story we're going to leave behind is what's more important than even the actions that take place itself. In other words, beyond the war and the warrior, only the story remains. And so I, I encourage people to make sure that no matter who they come in contact with, they should leave behind a great impression. They should teach, um, or they should be able to impact on others what others will be able to go tell others about them. It shouldn't be a bad story. 
because uh, I'm a professional athlete, uh, well, I'm an amateur athlete, but because of the level I've risen to as an Olympic and world champion, I've got to the height of my sports and I have a bit of a notoriety. People now know me for who I am, so I'm using that uh, fame, if you would call it, to raise awareness to a cause that I'm interested in. I'm trying to build a school uh, in Nigeria, in a no other town where I grew up, where up until today they have a shack as a building. Um, I'm trying to build a school that will have six classrooms, so grades one to six can have a classroom of their own, where for the first time they will be able to see computers. In fact, the teachers will be able to see computers for the first time. Um, I'm also going to, we're going to set up a, a borehole so they can be able to have clean drinking water. Right now what they have is a stream that flows across the village and they do everything on that stream, pour debris, you know, uh, wash their clothes and bathe in that same stream and drink that same water. Uh, so what we're trying to encourage is to build um, a well, a borehole in the, in the community so they can have clean drinking water. Uh, so, so that's what I'm trying to do and I'm getting a lot of support from the public, from the Canadian public and um, hopefully early next year the school is going to take shape. When the school is built and you know you, you finally see the structure set up and see kids going in there, I think uh, going there for the opening ceremonies is probably going to be one of the greatest days of my life. To to see that um, a, a dream that taken shape a long time ago has come to fruition. Um, to see that Canadians um, are from all walks of life have been able to donate from one dollar to ten dollars for this school project and, and and in fact that school children from all over Canada have been able to join me in this campaign to raise funds to be able to set that up for kids their age in another continent is something that I'm really proud of and for me that day is going to be one of the greatest days of my life. When you get involved in sports a lot of things can happen to you. For me Growing up in a village where, until I was 12 years old, I never even saw what a car looked like. Sports gave me the opportunity to be able to come to Canada, to be a Canadian citizen. And, and not just that, sports has given me the opportunity to travel to more than 40 countries in the world, to make more than 100 friends all across the world. There's no city in the world or no country in the world where I go to where I don't have a friend that I can crash with. And sports has given me the opportunity to be able to know lots of people, to know a lot about different cultures, to broaden your horizon in a way. And so to, to the kids out there, I want to tell you that you should get involved, get involved in athletics. You don't have to be an Olympic gold medal, medalist in the sense that you go to the Olympics. That is not all that matters. But the fact that you are out there, you are active, you're taking care of your health, you feel better about yourself, you, have, you make friends, you're able to work in a team environment, you know what pressure is that you can deal with it, are the kind of things you're going to derive from being involved in sports, and I would encourage you to do that.